When Kenny Omega left New Japan Pro Wrestling to join AEW, he essentially passed the torch to two men, Jay White and Will Ospreay. He said, you represent the rest of the world in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh my God, it's Will Ospreay, the leader of the United Empire. And wait, inside the ring, that's Aaron Hanare and Aussie Open also. The Will Ospreay that we see before us today is a man that feels like he has enemies at all sides, that he has this United Empire and no one else. Of United Empire, Osprey, bringing in the reinforcements. And he approaches every match as if it's not just a wrestling match, but a point to prove that he is the best in the world. And to have a win on Dynamite, even in a trio's tag team match, that kind of momentum is going to be huge for Osprey. I've called many Will Osprey matches, and I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that have not seen him in action on television or in person, he is extraordinary. Even at a young age, Will Osprey was a tremendous athlete. He only had to see a thing one time, and then he was able to master that technique. The thing about Osprey is he knows how gifted he is. He knows what an advantage he has over most opponents. And I think that's what makes him dangerous. Look who's back, and he is freshly squeezed. Osprey looks on cautiously. Will Osprey has a massive chip on his shoulder, and arriving here in AEW, tuning his own horn, saying that he is the top of the top, the best of the best in pro wrestling, coming here and lose his first match, that has got to eat away at Will Ospreay. It is getting more and more tense before Forbidden Door. I think that's even more motivation, not only for him, but for Aussie Open as well. In this trio's tag team match, it's to prove not only that you're the best in tag team action, but then to go on to Forbidden Door and prove that one-on-one, -on -one, you're unstoppable. Similar to the Pack and Buddy Matthews match, there's a lot more going on between Malachi Black and Pento Oscuro than just a spot in the tournament. Members of the House of Black, please rise. Congratulations, Puck. But I hope you don't think that one win eradicates the multiple losses, nor eradicates the painful memories of them. What do you tell a man that the house forced to change everything about himself? Do you tell him that despite his immeasurable talents, he simply couldn't get the job done? Or do you tell him it made him look weak? This is a rivalry that dates back, I mean, over six months. And now to have something as heavy as qualifying for the All-Atlantic Championship match at Forbidden Door on the line, it just makes things that much more tense and that much more important. My girl, my girl, don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines. Where the sun don't ever shine I would follow the whole night through My girl, my girl Don't lie to me My girl, my girl Don't lie to me We know Death Triangle already has somebody in the Final Four at Forbidden Door. Malachi Black is going to be fighting tooth and nail for House of Black to have somebody in that final round matchup for the inaugural All-Atlantic Championship. You can wear a darker mask. You can change everything about yourself and still it wouldn't have made a difference because we allowed you to walk in our world. Malaka! Para mí, solo eres un payaso intentando ser un chico malo. Penta says, Malachi, you're nothing but a clown trying to impersonate a bad guy. Your time here was given. 
It's about time that I take you out of this world and into the next. Malachi Black, Penta or Skuru is gonna send you packing back to Dash Netherlands. You strange gangly creep. I think this is as close to a toss-up as you can get in AEW. The House of Black has always seemed to have Death Triangle's number when it comes to the trio's tag team matches, but when it's one-on-one, -on -one, Malachi Black's been a destructive force, but Penta's been an incredible wrestler year after year. And to have an opportunity to become the first AEW All-Atlantic champion, that's an incredible amount of pressure on both athletes. The idea of Forbidden Door finally coming to reality is a dream come true for fans, for wrestlers, for announcers alike. The idea of seeing the best of AEW collide with the best of New Japan all on one night, on one stage, mesmerizing, tantalizing. This is the stuff that fans have been pining for, and now we finally get it, June 26th. When I first heard about Forbidden Door and I first heard about AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, coming together for a big event, I was much like any other wrestling fan because that's what I am, a wrestling fan, very excited about this. I think fans all around the world uh, wanted to see what we could do against some of the great stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling and I think uh, fans in Japan wanted to see what AEW was all about and our big stars, how they would uh, fair in the ring against New Japan Pro Wrestling stars. So this is this is an event that really is uh, going to be one of the most talked about events in pro wrestling, not only for the remainder of this year, once it happens, I think for decades and years to come. And the thing you have to remember about New Japan Pro Wrestling is this is the longest running pro wrestling promotion in Japan. And their history dates back to 1972 when the promotion was founded by Antonio Noki And Inoki you may remember him from the Bad News Bears movies. You may remember him from when he fought Muhammad Ali. Antonio Noki was a true pioneer in combat sports. And Inoki founded New Japan Pro Wrestling not to just be a pro wrestling company, but to be the premier combat sports company in all of Japan. And because New Japan Pro Wrestling has this tremendous wealth of top tier professional wrestlers that many American fans have never had the chance to see, that creates so much buzz around an event like this where the AEW fan that is only familiar with American wrestling is now being introduced to a completely new style. Maybe they heard their friends talk about it, maybe they, they haven't heard anybody talk about it, but they know the respect that the AEW athletes have for the New Japan Pro Wrestling competitors. And just based on that alone, this is a card up and down full of, of dream matches, of matches that are happening for the first time and could only happen at Forbidden Door. Going to Chicago to do any wrestling event, anyone who's been around the block a few times, they understand in our industry, in pro wrestling, Chicago has always been a hotbed for great professional wrestling. No matter what style of professional wrestling, I've had the opportunity to wrestle in Chicago many times. Always awesome. But Forbidden Door, being at the United Center, being in Chi-Town, the Windy City, all those gimmicky names, it's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. These are hardcore wrestling fans who understand just how big of a deal it is to have Tanahashi on the show, to have Minoru Suzuki on the show teaming with Chris Jericho for the very first time. So there's a lot of history in Chicago uh, from the wrestling standpoint of AEW and a lot of knowledge from the, from the fans in Chicago who once again will be super excited to see the New Japan Pro Wrestling roster. And that's evidenced by the fact that the show sold out in what, an hour?